So let, let's divide this into the three, um, you know, four food groups. We'll, we'll talk about apartments, office, industrial, and uh, retail. Uh, the apartment market actually is looking pretty good. Uh, so a number of things are happening that are very helpful. First of all, we're just not building anything. In a typical year in the U.S., if we go back well, many years now, we build three to 400,000 apartments a year. Uh, we're at well under 100,000 units right now. And, and as a result, we've been able to eat away at the supply simply because we're not providing any more supply. And so just new households start digging into apartment space. At the same time, people are leaving their single-family detached houses. We've seen the homeownership rate drop pretty dramatically in the last four years. They need to live somewhere, and so they live in apartments. At the same time, people's incomes have stopped crashing. Uh, I mean, 2008, 2009 was just horrible. We saw a 6% decrease in GDP. We shed about 8 million jobs from peak to trough. Uh, we lost a lot of household wealth. And while things aren't getting a lot better, they've stopped getting worse. And what that means is we don't expect rents to keep falling in apartments. We're, and they fell quite a lot, particularly here in Southern California. So, so those fundamentals look pretty good. Uh, the, the one problem, though, is we are forming many fewer households than we typically do. In a, in a typical year, we have about 1.1, 1.2 million new households in the United States. In 2010, we're going to have something like 400,000 new households form. And what's going on there is kids are staying with mom and dad longer, we're seeing more doubling up, and we're seeing more three-generation families than we used to. Uh, my colleague at USC, Gary Painter, writes about how many more people have grandparents, parents, and kids living in the house now relative to 20 years ago. It's about 50% more households do. And so the question going forward, is this a cyclar, cyclical phenomenon or a secular phenomenon? Which is to say, is it the lousy economy that's keeping people in with their parents and their grandparents? Or is it a change in culture? Um, do people just not want to spend the money on housing? They'd rather spend money on other things. And, and some of Gary's work shows that, in particular, uh, Chinese and Latinos are much more likely to live in three-generation households. And, and there's almost a view, why waste money on housing until you go start your own family and have your own kids and that kind of stuff you can save your money for other things. Uh, so that household formation piece is, is a problem going forward. But in general, the demographics look good. The number of new people who are entering the age at which they rent apartments is increasing, has been increasing. We aren't building anything, so, so we feel pretty good about that. Industrial, again, when you're, California industrial we feel very good about, and, and we're actually seeing some perking up in the manufacturing sector in the U.S. in general. Uh, I think Ford, for example, while it's not a California story, it is a remarkable story. This is a company that was left for dead, that didn't take any government funds, and is seeing substantial increases in its sale. I think, uh, again, it was September, October, their sales were up 20 percent from a year earlier. And the main thing about Ford is, one, they're making good cars. They didn't used to make good cars. They, they make legitimately competitive cars. And second, the weakening of the dollar is very helpful to them. And, and a lot of people don't know this, but they do a lot of business abroad. Um, to the extent this reflects a broader pattern in U.S. manufacturing, this is a very positive sign. So we might even see better industrial results in parts of the country other than California. But we, as we've already said, have the advantage of being right here, right next to the biggest port in the country, biggest container port in the country, one of the largest in the world. And so we feel pretty good about that market. Um, the office market, not you know, it, it's problematic, and it, it's going to be for some time. And again, it, it's as corporate America looks to shed costs, because of technology, one of the easiest places to do it now is office space. You can substitute out of office space with technology. You do want people to come into the office. You do want people to congregate. But they don't necessarily have to be in the office every day. And there are people whose jobs actually require them to be out of the office a lot. Uh, when you think of the big four accounting firms, the young people who work for those firms are on travel 35, 40 percent of the year. So there's no particularly need for them to have a space and a building at all time. At the, at the same time, by being flexible, they can actually provide better space when they're on the road in other places. And again, it was very striking to me, uh, talking to people in the real estate business, how already the iPad 
is changing the way people are thinking about space use. Now, this is good for us in California. Apple is one of our many wonderful companies here in California. Uh, and a reason to be bullish about California in general is, again, if you look at the most admired companies in the country, we have a disproportionate number of them. Uh, if you look at venture capital, we get half of the venture capital in the United States. If you look at business startups, we're way out of the rest of the country. And so all that's good for office space. But I still don't know we're ever going to see the kind of office space demand that we saw a few years ago, uh, unless we have an enormous amount of economic growth. And then finally, retail. Um, we are seeing some b bottoming there. We are seeing spending come back, although it still hasn't reached the past peak. Uh, but very specialized kinds of retail. Uh, things like drug stores are doing well. Grocery stores are doing well. We expect the Walmarts and the Costcos and the Targets to do well. Middle class retail is probably going to be a long haul because if you look at the balance sheet of middle class households, they're not in good shape. Uh, one bit of evidence of this that I like to cite is if you look at people in my parents' generation, when they reached my age, the size of their mortgage was the same as their income. Now, people my age have mortgages that are about twice the size of their income. And one of the interesting things we're seeing with the decline in interest rates, when people can refinance, is what they're doing is they're shortening their term instead of reducing their payment. So the idea is, I want to have my house paid off, so I'm going to take out a 15-year loan instead of a 30-year loan. For the long-term health of the economy, this is a wonderful thing. But for the short-term health, that means people aren't reducing their payments, which could be used to stimulate consumption. And so I, I think we still have a ways to go before we see a big comeback in retail space.